Hello and welcome to another episode of Get Published TV. I'm Dale Beaumont, your host, and this is the show to help you to write, publish, and market your own best-selling book. Now, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about having a literary agent and uh, how that can be used as a strategy to get your book published. But it's actually an episode that I recorded, recorded a little while ago while I was traveling through Europe. So keep watching, it's a great episode, lots of useful information, and I'll see you on the next episode. Hi, I'm Dale Beaumont and welcome to this episode of Get Published TV. This is the show to help you to get your book published and make it a raving success. Now, as you can see, I'm out of our regular studio today. I'm actually uh, traveling between Vigo in Spain and Cork in Ireland and I'm aboard a, a lovely uh, big cruise ship called the Crown Princess. It, uh, it has about 3,000 passengers and about 1,000 crew, so it's almost like a floating sea city in a way. There's um, you know, basketball courts just above and we've got uh, five or six restaurants on board and there's a games room and there's a library and there's a, a bar area which is where I'm in right now, not drinking of course, uh, but it's just absolutely incredible um, the way that this uh, whole, um, whole operation uh, is put together. It's amazing. But what we're going to do now is we're going to get into today's episode which is all about what is a literary agent? So we're going to talk about a literary, literary agent right now. Now, a literary agent is essentially the middleman between you, the author, and the major publisher that you're trying to approach. Now, there was once a time where there really weren't any literary agents. Authors used to just deal directly with uh, publishers. But as demand increased and more and more people wanted to get their works published, it was becoming virtually impossible for publishers to dedicate the time and resources to assessing every single work that was submitted. Because many of the major publishers today receive up to 300 unsolicited manuscripts. That means works that they haven't actually asked for, that have just been sent to them in the hope that uh, someone would pick them up and to get published. And you can imagine, at the end of the day, publishers are business people and they need to turn a profit and they were employing uh, teams and teams of people to read works and unfortunately the vast majority probably about 95 maybe even 98 percent of all the works they received either weren't at a particular quality and standard that was ready to be published or even if it was it would have required a lot of work and a lot of time a lot of effort to get it up to that point and there's probably other works that um, that they'd rather just put the, their time into or they felt there wasn't a market for that particular book or the author hadn't actually positioned that book in the right way or there was nothing really unique or original about it, a whole lot of variety of reasons. And um, so because there's so many works that haven't really ever been properly uh, planned and also packaged to be presented to a publisher, they have, uh, the industry's kind of evolved and then what's happened is the emergency of what's called a literary agent and that's essentially someone that sits in between you the publisher, sorry you the author and the publisher. Now, what uh, typically happens is that rather than going directly to a publisher, you first of all, you get an agent, a literary agent to actually accept you. Now, in order to be accepted, there's a number of things that you obviously need to prove to them. You need to prove that uh, the quality of your writing, of course, you need to prove that there's a market for your book, uh, that you're gonna be able to uh, help in the promotion and the marketing of it, and that you've, you've thought about who is the audience for the book, who's gonna buy it, and what are the elements that are gonna make it a commercial success. So if you've ticked all those boxes and a, and a literary agent agrees to take you on board, then here are a few of the things that they are actually going to do. So I'm just going to look down because I've got a few uh, notes here as I, uh, as I read them off for you and this will just give you a bit of an understanding of what a literary agent actually does. So first of all, once they've agreed to take you on board, they need to make sure that they lift the quality of your work to be at a standard that is ready for publishing. So in some uh, instances, they may require you to get a little bit of uh, editing um, done. Um, now, even though a lot of publishers will do their own editing, sometimes it's, it's important that some editing is done prior to going to the actual, being submitted to the publisher, because if it, there's a lot of mistakes in the work or, or things aren't structured correctly, then that's grounds for that book to be rejected. And at the end of the day, if a literary agent's putting their time and resources, they can't afford for too many books to be rejected. They've got to make sure that they're, they're going to be uh, picked up. 
So they're going to uh, make sure they lift the quality of your work. Some of them will, uh, as I said, work with uh, editors and proofreaders to improve that quality. And then once they've done that, they're going to make sure that they've clearly identified, well, who is the target market for the actual book? Because it's one of the key questions that a publisher is going to be asking them. And most authors have no idea or a very vague idea of who is their target market. So it's important that, that you really think through that. The next thing that they're going to do is they're going to make some suggestions as to uh, maybe the title of the book if the book doesn't yet have a title or the packaging of the book and maybe even some of the marketing. Now at the end of the day it is the publisher's job to do a lot of the marketing as long with you the author of course but the literary agent needs to come up with some ideas and some suggestions because these are the questions that uh, the publisher is going to be asking them. The literary agent really needs to have thought through the, these things clearly. They're also going to um, think about you know, the, the best way to sell you as an author because people, publishers don't just want great books anymore. They want a great person behind the book that's going to be able to help and assist in the marketing and the promotion of the book. So they're going to need someone that uh, either has the ability to, to do um, public speaking engagements or maybe can market themselves on the internet. Maybe they can build a platform through um, uh, social media um, or maybe just uh, through mainstream media such as newspapers, television, magazines, etc. and really has a great story because um, that's something that is very important for a book to become a commercial success these days. So once they've done through all of that and they think it's at a, an appropriate level and standard, then they're going to basically pitch your book directly to the publisher. And so the reason why literary agents work is because they have a direct line, a direct contact in the publishing department and they know exactly the right person to speak to. And publishers you know, typically like dealing with their literary agents because they know that if a literary agent's going to put themselves and their reputation on the line that the books is going to be of a reasonable standard and quality. So what um, publishers would do is rather than have a look at 300 uh, potential new works that have come in for that day, they'd rather just cut out the 95% that aren't going to be up to scratch and deal with just the 5% and then most of those come through literary agents. Now it's not always the case that you need to always have a literary agent but in many cases it's becoming more and more important. Now then what will happen is if a publisher agrees to take on your work through the literary agent then the literary agent is going to be like the main uh, point of contact. So typically you won't have a huge amount of uh, conversations directly with the publisher that will all go through a literary agent. The literary agent will help to um, then negotiate the contract between you the author and the publisher and they'll help to make sure they negotiate your advance which is the amount of money that you'll get uh, paid up front for the um, completion of the work or for the signing of the contract depending on how far along the book actually is and they'll make sure that you get paid your agreed percentage of royalties on an ongoing basis as well. And then if your book's not finished, they'll work with you to make sure that your book is finished in a timely manner because it's all built into the contract. And in order for, for them to get paid and you to get paid, you need to make sure that you stick to your deadlines. And that's very, very important. And, uh, and then moving forward with regards to, you may be wondering, well, how does a literary agent make their money? Well, they normally get a percentage of your advance and they get a percentage of your royalty income as well. Now, it does differ on the, the particular literary agent and the amount of work that they've put in to getting your book effectively across the line or get your book picked up. Um, so it's a good idea to speak with your, a, literary, a potential literary agent and to ask them all of these questions before actually going ahead. So this has been a bit of an overview because many people out there are really confused, well what is a literary agent? What do they actually do? Now you've got a better idea. And in future episodes, we're going to talk about some of the, the advantages and disadvantages about using literary agents because it's important to, to look at things from both perspectives. And we're going to also talk about how you to actually prepare your book in order to pitch to a literary agent. So there are going to be some topics for future conversations. And I would like to think that we'll be interviewing a couple of literary agents here on Get Published TV as well. So you can uh, get some first-hand experience about exactly what a literary agent does. 
So um, I really appreciate you getting right to the end and watching this episode of Get Published TV. We've got a whole bunch of other great episodes covering heaps of different topics on Get Published TV. So please go there if you haven't already. Check out some of those episodes and I look forward to seeing you on another episode of Get Published TV. See you next time.